Recently, I reviewed the Thrunite T1, a compact yet very capable EDC flashlight. So when Thrunite offered to send me the T1S, I wondered just how different can they be? If you're interested in finding out, keep watching. All right, as always, I just want to declare that Thrunite did send this flashlight to me for testing and review, and I did not pay for it. However, I'm receiving no compensation for the making of this video or from the sale of any of these lights. All right, so what we'll do is we'll go down to the tabletop. I'll go over the specifications, the performance, and the operation of the T1S. Then I'll bring the T1 back into the picture. We'll go over how they are similar and how they differ. And then, of course, we'll get outside and do some testing. Before we go over the physical specifications for the Thrunite T1S, I thought I'd take a moment to go over what it came with. So this is the box the flashlight arrived in, simple cardboard box. Inside is the manual and warranty information. Small plastic bag containing a lanyard, a spare battery charging port cover, and a pair of spare O-rings, and a USB Type-C charging cable. Let's slide that aside. Now, I will go over the physical specifications for the light, but I will be listing them, of course, in the video description below. So, the overall weight for the light with the battery is 45 grams or 2.5 ounces. The length is 69.5 millimeters or 2.75 inches. The width or diameter at the basal is 26.5 millimeters or one inch. The body diameter is 22 millimeters or 0.86 of an inch. And it does come with a through night 1100 milliamp 18350 style battery, which of course is rechargeable. So I, I will want to point out right now that all those specifications I gave you are identical to the original T1. So let's now bring in the other flashlight and talk about what is the similar and where the differences lie. So as far as similarities go, you can see that they look very much alike. There are a few differences in terms of aesthetics or appearance. And the one that's probably most prominent is is the silver anodized aluminum basil at the top of the original T1. The T1S does have that, but it is recessed, so it's not quite so obvious. If you look a little close, more closely, you'll see that there is some slight differences in the knurling along the body and around the top at the basil. Otherwise, the charging port covers appear the same and the on-off buttons appear to be the same. They, they have the identical uh, pocket clip, two-way pocket clip. They could be interchanged and they are both have magnetic tail caps as you can see they will even hold themselves together so there are a lot of similarities physical aspects and just a slight difference I think that makes it easier to know which flashlight you're picking up if you happen to own the two of them but what else is similar well they both have an IPX8 uh, water resistance uh, rating with a 1.5 meter impact resistance so that's all the things that are similar. Now, there are some superficial things that are different about the two of them that I think is makes worth noting at this point. And I will open up first off the T1 to show you the battery port. Now, the battery charging of the original T1 is an older micro USB. I say older in style, still very functional, of course, but it has been updated on the T1S for a USB type C charging port, which should result in a much faster recharge of the light. Uh, so that's what's external. Now, everything else, the difference between the two of them is internal to the performance of the light itself. And there is quite a difference. So what I'll do now is I'll go over the performance specifications for the T1S as well as its operation. And as we do, I'll talk about the difference between this flashlight and the older T1. All right, we're going to go over the performance specifications for the T1S. And as I do, I'll talk about the differences in those performance specifications with the T1. But before we do, it's important to note, and this is probably one of the single biggest differences in both the performance specifications and in the operation, and that is where the T1 had an infinity adjustment for its lumens. In other words, you just held the button down and it ran from low to high. The T1S actually has stepped 
lumen changes. So they does have a Firefly low, medium, and high, as well as turbo and strobe, whereas the older T1 does have a Firefly and strobe, but it's low to high is variable with a constant pressure on the on off switch. Okay, so the differences in terms of performance are very slight. And of course, I can list these both in the video description. But I think you'll find from in terms of lumen settings, there's not a lot of difference, really. Uh, it's very, very close. You'll see a difference when we look at the beam shots outside but when I just talk about numbers you won't hear a lot of differences so let's let's go back to the T1 the T1 working from the top down the T1 has a turbo mode of 1500 lumens which lasts for three minutes and then drops down uh, to 408 lumens for 52 minutes whereas the T1S has a turbo mode of 1,212 lumens, dropping down to 317 lumens after five minutes. So you can see there's not a huge difference there. This is where the difference begins. The T1S has a high of 407 lumens, which lasts for 80 minutes, whereas Infinity High on the T1 has 685 lumens, lasting for 65 minutes. Now, the T1S does have a... Or, Yes, the T1S has a medium setting of 94 lumens lasting for five and a half hours and a low of seven lumens lasting for 44 hours and, of course, a Firefly of 0.5 lumens lasting for 27 days. There is a strobe of 1,080 lumens lasting for 170 minutes. Now, the older T1, it doesn't have a medium and low setting. What it has is that infinity, but at its lowest setting, it'll come in at 15 lumens lasting lasting 35 hours. It also has a Firefly of 0.5 lumens. Interesting the difference here though, at 0.5 lumens, this will only last 12 days compared to 27 days here. I think those are kind of arbitrary and nice to know, but realistically, you'll, you'll have recharged your flashlight long before then. The T1 also has a much lower intensity strobe at 550 lumens, but it will last 120 minutes. So yeah, quite a bit of a difference in some of the range, but at the very top end, I think they're relatively close together. The single biggest difference between these two flashlights in my opinion, is the beam itself. And you'll see this when we when we get outside to do some testing, but the older T1 has a beam distance of 102 meters with a 2600 candela intensity, whereas the newer T1S has a beam distance of 184 meters with a, an intensity of 8,460 candelas. And I, that is considerable. You'll see that very clearly when we get outside. And that is due to a couple of things. One, there is a difference in the type of LED that's been used in both of those flashlights. But also if I bring them up, you should be able to see a difference in the reflector inside of the basal itself. So the reflector inside of the T1S is deeper and does have a focuser. You can probably see that as I rotate it. And that focuser does make it look a little cloudy, but it really does help to increase the beam distance on this light, whereas the T1 does not have that. So those are the biggest differences, I think, between the two flashlights. All right, let's go into the differences in operation. In order to cut down on the confusion that's likely to occur if I try and compare both flashlights at the same time, I will focus in on the operation of the T1S. If you're interested in knowing more about how the T1 operates, I'll refer you back to that original review video. So the T1S does operate from a single side button that allows me to access everything from Firefly right up through turbo and strobe. So to access the Firefly, like most through night flashlights, simply hold down the button for one full second and you are in the Firefly mode. To access the lumen settings, press down once. I'm setting right now at the low of uh, seven lumens. If I press it down again, I bring it up to medium of 94 lumens. And if I press it down again, I am now at the high setting of 407 lumens. I can access turbo from either the on uh, condition or the off condition by a quick double tap. And now I'm at 1,212 lumens. There is also a strobe which can be accessed at any time with a triple tap. 
All right, having gone over the performance as well as physical specifications for the Thru-Night T1S as well as its operation, I think there's only th one thing left to do, and that is to get outside and do some testing of this light, and at the same time, we'll do some comparison shots with the original T1. So I'm going to do two sets of demonstrations. First one here in my gear room down in the basement. The next one I'll do outside. So this is the lowest setting for the flashlight, level low. Let's take it up to medium. So medium is considerably brighter. It's not bad. I can certainly see around my room, identify everything, can move around quite easily with this. Now let's take it up to high. There, that's the high level. So high is considerably brighter. Let's just take it up to turbo. And that is bright, without question. I think even brighter to the bare naked eye as opposed to the camera. All right, let's go outside with the light. All right, I'm going to do a quick demonstration against the side of my house. There is enough ambient light out here for you to be able to see a little bit. Uh, let's start off with the T1. So this is T1 on its lowest lumen setting. And right beside it, I'm going to turn on the T1S. You can see that there is a little bit more concentration of light at the lowest lumen setting. I'm going to run the T1 up through until it flashes at its highest setting. And you can see that is quite bright. Now, let me just take the T1S up through. Now, I will turn off the T1 in a second so you get it more clear, but if you can see side by side, the T1, the one on the right, or the, excuse me, the T1S on the right has a much more defined central focus beam and a little bit brighter white than the T1 on the left. Let me just turn the T1 off. So you can see now there is spill to the outside, but it's the central hotspot that really defines this. Now, I'm just going to shift the camera around so you can see what, how this beam casts into my backyard. So the trees that we are looking at there are about uh, 50, 60 feet away. So, you know, with that beam casting so much further than the T1, it does a good job of illuminating even my, my backyard here in the city. This would be plenty for hiking at night. Now, just by comparison, let me turn on the T1. And you can see the T1 is illuminating, but with much more wider angle, more of a floodlight and less of a central hotspot. Uh, so quite a bit more diffuse, which is great for the purpose intended. But once again, look how much brighter the hotspot is in the center of the T1S. Let's wrap this video up. You know, I don't know that I can say one of these flashlights is that much better than the other. I think it'll come down to buyer preferences, what it is you're looking for in a small, compact EDC flashlights. Likely, either one of these flashlights will will cater to what most people are looking for. However, I can say now that I've carried both of these flashlights for some time that I do prefer the T1S and for only for one simple reason, and that is the beam itself, especially outdoors. The T1S has that tighter beam and cast a little further, and I think that's what I prefer in a light about this size, especially if I am using it outdoors. Other than that, I'd be just as happy to have the T1. Both of them are good functioning flashlights in my opinion. All right, that's all I have to say about the T1S. If you have any questions or any comments, please put those in the comment section below. And of course, I will be providing the links to where you can purchase these flashlights in the comment sec or in the video description. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.